Well, 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 welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. We got plenty to talk about today. Bitcoin moving in the overnight hours, my sleeping hours once again. But as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest Thursdays. Is it Thirsty Thursday? Yes, it's Thirsty Thursday. And we got plenty to talk about. So let's waste no more time getting a live scene right here, right now. And Bitcoin, take another stab, an official stab right at that blue 37, uh, 377 exponential. I think this is best shown perhaps on a Bitstamp chart right over here as it does have more, more prolonged history. You can see a beautiful test right in this area and rejection so far. So I do believe that we're getting the move that I was looking for yesterday. I believe that we have put in likely a local top. However, does that mean that I just short immediately right here right now? Well, as a trader, you know, I mean, that's I mean, that uh, that's up to you. And that's obviously not financial advice. So I'm not a financial advisor, but I would actually be looking for another test, uh, perhaps back into the 5150 ish area before. But I do believe that we have seen that first ultimate uh, that ultimate Darth Maul dildo right over here on extremely heavy volume. We don't necessarily have vol uh, follow through just yet, but a rejection of about five hundred dollars from top to bottom. Yeah, we got fifty three fifty down to a little under forty eight hundred. So a little over a little over uh, five hundred dollars. We hit all of the overhead resistances beautifully, just perfectly spiking them up. And now seeing uh, seeing gravity, I think I believe take over. So we have the daily 377 in this range. We also have the two day uh, 200 exponential in this range. We have the three day uh, 200 exponential in this range as well. Actually, funnily enough, they're kind of aligning with each other. But I guess you know it kind of makes sense that they are uh, quite in the same range. Anyways, uh, weekly as well, hitting the 50 exponential and, and and across the 89, the 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 green and the cyan right over here, and rejecting for on all time frames. Of course, we also have the monthly to deal with as well, which we have the 21 exponential coming in right around. 52, a little bit above 5,200. But of course, these are all... These are all decided on that time frame. So whatever happens in you know like an hourly or God forbid below that uh, is just you know is just is just that. I mean it's it's a crack trader's dream. But as far as you know the higher time frames, looking at the bigger picture, to me this still is actually having the consequences of a rejection. Of course, this will be you know I would completely uh, let go of these beliefs if we could actually take out the three seven seven exponential to the upside. But for right now, that to me looks like a massive rejection on huge volume. All I need to see now is follow through. And where am I looking towards? I'm looking towards that target of uh, of the two. 200 exponential and 200 simple right over here at around 4,600. So, you know, does that mean that I think that it's going to happen today? Fuck no. Actually, I think it's probably going to happen, you know, over, over the next few days, something like that. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, again, time analysis, not really something that I think can really be done. Uh, we do have all sorts of things kind of agreeing with each other. I typically very rarely look at this, but everyone's been kind of, uh, you know, throwing it out there. I'll put on the titty sequential because, well, <laughs> oh man, bringing out the titty sequential. My God, what does my life come to? But basically a mass rejection on an eight. Now we're printing a nine right now. And I would still be, you know, you know, it does look to me like it wants to test back into that 5150-ish range. But to me, that'd probably be a sell uh, on top of that i believe on a three day we're, we're working on a nine yes we did just set in stone a nine right over here uh on on also rejection of the 200 exponential and i believe the weekly is also a nine as well again not my favorite way of doing things but it is interesting to see the confluence between all of my major areas which i put a shit ton of weight on the exponentials and then also something like this which is suggesting uh we're getting a little bit overextended right now as well which i would say i agree with um especially on the lower time frames you know, becomes you know becomes very very readily apparent. Uh, we do have some pretty nasty bearish divergence on the four-hour total time frame. A lot of the time, uh, we also have lost the exponential right over here as well. And a lot of the time, I want to see at the very least a retest back into the twenty-one exponential. Uh, so you know, first things first, before forty-six hundred, I would be looking at a zone between the twenty-one on the four-hour and uh, in, in that forty-six hundred level that we looked at on the daily. But not only that, we have the four-hour Stokes starting to turn around as well, and I believe the daily Stokes have confirmed down as well. So you know, again, the wheels are turning. I believe that we saw exactly what we wanted to see last night and now we're just gonna you know now it becomes a little bit of a waiting game uh daily rsi actually i mean it's 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 pretty fucking high but of course i you know it's it's the same thing as when it gets too low all the people saying it can't go lower bro you know the same people over here saying can't go higher bro but it is pretty fucking high uh to be fair you know the last time that we were in this range was quite literally december uh early december 2017 when bitcoin was around that twenty thousand marker so we have you know more importantly we actually have done something that we i mean just haven't done in you know well over a year but also from a historical from, uh, from a historical stance these kind of have called major tops uh, just by the spikes um, going back into the, you know going back and kind of back testing it uh, major spike right over here it actually did work its way higher put in some divergence uh, major spike right over here put in some divergence and again that's really what I want to look towards as uh, as we do put in a major spike on this current trajectory I do want to see over the next one to two days it put in a little bit of divergence that would be my next big signal of course this is just the first initial etchings of kind of confirming that that area was going to be the local high. Uh, I'd imagine that, you know, we probably spent a little bit of time grinding this area. Uh, 5150 would look a little bit, you know, a little bit likely if we could come back and retest that area. 
and then I'd be looking for the move to, to come back and test supports. Again, the 200 exponential, 200 simple is ultimately what I'm looking at and very, 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 very critical as I look over here to make sure that I'm recording. Yes, good. Oh man, I'm so happy about that. So many times I've just been recording for fucking 20 minutes. And I'm like, I should check if the mic's working. Oh, I've just been speaking to myself and it's fucking blank. Jesus Christ. Anyways, um, yeah. So again, it's uh, it, you know, it's it, it as as always. It's kind of a long term game with Bitcoin. Trading the lower time frames uh, actually has been okay the last few days. If we go down to like a very low time frame, like a thirty minute, you could actually make this work. But this is the first time that we've really seen something like this in a very long time. Of course, this also does open up the next discussion that hey, if Bitcoin gets back above about fifty two fifty. I would not look at this as a local top anymore. I would look at this as likely to have continuation, and I'd be looking at this next level around uh, 5,600. According to the volume profile, it does look like we have some. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of action being done in the in the 55, 50 to 5,600 range right over here. So <clears throat> right now we're kind of out in no man's land. That's why you're seeing Bitcoin just fly everywhere. It is. <laughs> it's. You know. You. I mean. I'm sure you, like me, have been watching Bitcoin over the last few days, and uh, and right now the ranges are pretty massive, and you can actually do a lot of damage within, you know, even an hourly dildo. I mean, like this right over here, uh, this what looks like a very inconsequential dildo is about actually has a range of you know about 50 bucks which is tradable um you know before when it was over here it's like uh you know this size dildo would, ha would be a range of like ten dollars to twenty dollars you know it's just not tradable in my opinion so <clears throat> you know we are starting to see this sort of behavior going on which tells me that uh you know that is that, that is exactly indicative of what we're looking at on the volume profile saying hey we're really trying to figure out what do we want to do in this area more importantly though i would imagine that overall the overall picture now getting divorced from looking at this as a rejection and wanting to see this as support i want to see bitcoin really put in time going between 4600 and 5200 right over here i guess you could say it's a little bit higher if you go to bitstamp um but overall you know around the same sort of thing now with all this said i've been talking about all sorts of um bullish things over the last few days but i really want to be so damn clear with the way that i relate these ideas because in the lower to medium time frames yes has been bullish in the higher time frames we have still not necessarily seen what i need to see in order to you know call call bear market over or anything like that i haven't really changed those views i've been getting a lot of uh, private messages about that and i just want to be very clear about that because remember when i'm when i'm doing these videos i have to you know it's when talking about different time frames i make the assumption that you understand that we that 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 time frame you know that when i speak about some about that time frame it's related to only that time frame so that's how you can be bullish on a lower time frame as a trader and then on a higher time frame not necessarily so much looking for a rejection more like which is exactly what we got right over here so it's one of those things where I have to be a little bit careful. I also, you know, I also realize that it's impossible to it's 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 impossible to make sure that you're heard properly. Um, you know, it's I, I guess it's a little bit of my fault, but also, uh, you know, it's it's the fucking Internet, man. It's a fucking Internet. Anyways, more importantly speaking, um, I would be looking for Bitcoin to probably try to consolidate the, the area between 46 and about 52 over the next, you know, over the next few weeks. Um, some like that would kind of make sense as we fill in the volume profile here. Keep in mind that when Bitcoin shot down. I mean, the reason why it shot down is because we had absolutely nothing doing all the way till this, um, you know, high 3000 range uh, coming back all the way over here. And a lot of the time, Bitcoin, you know, or sorry, assets as they're building want to come back and fill in the volume profile so that you don't have just a major massive gap in the middle right here. You want to I, I like to make the analogy of like making of constructing a building and you have to put in a strong foundation and have to fill in all, you know, all the floors. Well, Bitcoin, when it when it was going on the way up, it missed floor like 20 through 30 and uh and so on the way back down once we broke this area right over here it's just a straight shot down well same thing you know going a little bit lower i'm sure a lot of people have their eyes on that but We'll talk about that if and when we get there. More importantly, on the more recent time frames and some that we can actually uh hey, hey, what's up? Uh you fix see ya. Hopefully I'm saying that right, man. Hey, what pleasure to meet you, man. Uh always always a pleasure to welcome new people in here. Um, but overall, you know, we're kind of getting this more flighty action in here because we don't have that thick AF volume profile that we, uh, you know, uh, that we had down here in the three thousands. So Bitcoin really gonna find out who is doing what and where the liquidity does indeed lie, which is gonna be the next sort of you know, the next sort of um, I suppose phase of this more immediate or, or sorry, intermediate uh, consolidation right over here. Anyways, feeling good by the way. I've been getting some good nights of sleeps, so I really 
recommend uh, like those massive curtains that block out the sun. Fucking amazing because the sun like doesn't it doesn't set here in, in Finland. It's crazy. Um, <clears throat> anyways, off that topic and back off the volume profile as well. Let's go back down to those lower time frames. I want to see how high this bearish uh, th this bearish divergence does go. Uh, we got four hour stokes going down. Yep, we talked about that. We got four hour bearish divergence going right over here. Four hour jewel catching the top. Oh, beautifully. Oh, baby. Now, I was not awake for this, but uh, but hey, if you have access to the jewel and you caught that one, that was just a magic. That now I don't I don't insinuate that each and every time you get a you get a signal like that, you're gonna have a five hundred dollar play. But <laughs> that was that was an example of a perfect signal. And there you go, playing out. We were speaking about it yesterday. How it was likely to happen in the next day, day or two. And uh, there you go. Now now kind of uh, progressing through. And let's actually check out the higher time frames above that guy. Uh, we got eight hour right over here putting in. Actually, well, I guess a little bit of divergence, uh, but has a nice massive long legged doji right over here. A sign of indecision, perhaps even reversal. As we do see, uh, eight hour stokes actually snaking around. They are being a little bit resilient in this area, to be fair. But overall, massive volume on this rejection. Uh, while I do think that it puts in time going sideways here, as long as we remain below about 52.50, I would look at this as the local top and likely to come back down. If we take out about 5200, 52.50, then that's where I start to say, all right, looks like it wants to take another leg. And uh, 56 is the next 55 to 56 is the next level that I start to look towards. Um, but for right now, <clears throat> you know, after a major run like this, and I, and I really want to get this out because after a major run like this, everyone's uh, the bears are always in like a hurry to short. But I want to relate this to you because after a big move like this, it's very, 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 very rare that the move just falls apart like that. It takes a few days. You know, you got to shake out the buyers and the sellers. You got to, you know, you got to set both sides, let the consolidation happen. Then we find out who wins the war, and that's kind of what we're doing right now, which. You know, can I mean we have we have till the rest of the week, right? I mean that's, you know, it's 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 only Thursday, so again, I you know while while I would be looking to short this uh, ultimately, I probably would wait for you know I'd, pro I'd probably wait for some sort of you know some sort of confirmation if we could pop back up to fifty one fifty, that would be a lot more that would be a lot more um a lot more reliable in my in my opinion, just because if we get to fifty one fifty, then uh, then that offers up and really gooses the risk reward trade. It, sorry, the risk reward in your favor. As a trader, and of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, and I don't even really have a position right now. I'm still, I'm, I'm basically holding, um, I'm basically holding nothing. I, I've, I have a long position on spot from 39.30, and then I have a, and then I'm short a bunch, uh, a bunch of deep in the money calls at the 42.50 strike, and I think I'm positioned right around 50.50. So, you know, I don't, I don't benefit on any move from 50.50 to 51.50 or 52.50 from that long stock or, or long coins, but. <clears throat> You know, I don't really care to right now. I want to see how this resolves itself. Then I'll make actions. Basically, I'll do one of two things. I'll either take away the long stock or I will close the short calls, uh, depending upon how we break it. If we break 52.50 to the upside, get rid of the short calls. If we, uh, you know, if we grind that 51.50 area and I see a clear and I and I see and I see what I want to see, then I will just take away the long stock and hold the short calls and uh, and let that play out. But for right now. You know, not uh, not any more not not any more crazy than that. And like I said, probably going to take its time to really resolve itself, as uh, as you'd imagine. After a nice, well, Jesus Christ, how much how much of a move was this? Um, uh, about uh, thirteen hundred dollar move from from bottom to top so far. Now here's the thing: <clears throat> while we are seeing all these uh, divergences on the lower time frames, and actually, you know, a little bit of the intermediary uh, higher time frames as well. We got the twelve hour right over here, still, you know, looking a little bit uh, looking a little bit higher to me, looking like it's uh, look, you know, Stokes coming down. I think ten hours the same thing as well. Yeah, Stokes coming down as well. Although resilient, we did print a nice bearish engulfing dildo right over here and putting in bearish divergence on the RSI as well. You know, it's probably you know probably going to put in a little bit of time, and then I'd be looking for that test. Hopefully around 4,600. That would be that would just offer up the easiest play in my opinion to to actually you know actually as a trader. Um, of course, if we go back to where was it the 12 hour, the 12 hour that I wanted to look towards. Uh, 12 hour might be setting up for the jewel relatively soon, but it was maybe it was the daily that I was looking towards. Yeah, daily stokes are down. No, we already talked about that. There's there's one thing that I'm missing right now. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm sure it'll come back to me uh, soon enough. But yeah, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, you know, we hit uh, the big the big story to me is, is that we hit the major, major, major moving averages on all of the higher time frames daily, two day, three day, weekly and monthly. All very important to me. All major pivots essentially for the market cycle, in my opinion. I mean, if Bitcoin can close a monthly above 5200, I probably turn bullish uh i, I mean I, I i i think i'd comfortably say that yes i would turn bullish so more importantly speaking 
you know, it's, it's, it's a good confluence between the higher time frames and the lower time frames. So I would be looking for this area to be, you know, tapped a little bit more and then come back down. And I really want to see a retest of 4,600. Now, as far as the, now again, separating, separating views now from the intermediate time frame, I would be looking for a range between 46 and uh, 52 and a half, we'll call it. And I'd really want to see 46 hold if the bulls are going to have a legitimate push. I'd want to see a quick test of the 200 exponential down around here at around 46 and i want to see a I know, and, and if it's going to be good i want to see an immediate buyback just like we saw on the sell-off right over here an instant 500 dollars down from the higher or actually a little bit more than 500 dollars. i'd want to see you know i'd want to see an instant buyback if the bulls are going to show that they really do want to put the pressure on right here right now which is still you know like i said as long as we are living below the 21 exponential on the monthly i am you know, I am still going with the former trend. This is still this is still a downtrend, no matter which way you cut it on a monthly total time frame. Uh, if we can close above the 21 exponential, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I mean, at that point in time, I'll probably take some actual, you know, long term longs. Uh, although it'll be a little bit more preliminary. Of course, the, mo the most traditional way of doing it is back above about 6,000. But I, th you know, I think you're going to know beforehand. The problem is right now is that we are having a crossing of this red 10 symbol moving average and this yellow 21 exponential moving average to the downside, a lower period cross and the downside of a higher period, which telling us that the overall trend is shifting down and this is actually the initial this is actually the first tick on it funnily enough so here's the thing is that we are still technically in a downtrend from the monthly perspective and we really look at the monthly i think it becomes very visually apparent that you know as long as we're kind of be held in below this area it is a major question mark if this you know if if if, if this is the time when the mark cycle is going to turn around of course as a trader have to keep an open mind have to be agnostic if it does but this is exactly what i'm looking for does it you know if this happens i change you know i change my opinions uh, do i think that the low is in at that point Probably, you know, if, if that were to happen, probably if uh, if Bitcoin rejects from here even further, then, you know, then I go to the other side. But basically, you know, we we've seen how the monthly kind of plays out. Remember last month when we were saying that, hey, if Bitcoin closes above the 50 exponential, then or sorry, if Bitcoin closes below the 50 exponential, I'd probably be pretty damn bearish. But if it closes above, I'd be, you know, probably looking for fireworks. Well, I think we saw the fireworks now. So. Uh, so, so any more than this would be a change of behavior from the monthly, from the monthly total time frame. But of course, have to wait for the monthly to actually set itself in stone. And we're on the fourth day of April, so it's gonna be a while, man. I mean, shit. Uh, what? Twenty five days left. Uh, that's that's a goddamn eternity in cryptocurrency land. Anything can happen in that, you know, in that amount of time. Uh, but for right now, you know, it is worth mentioning as well that uh, the last time in 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin lost the 21 exponential. In fact, I think the only time that it's really truly lost it uh, was right over here. That became the governing factor until the ultimate turnaround, beautifully timing a bull market by closing above the 21 and then straight onwards and upwards for the next, Jesus Christ, man, um, three years from, from $300 to $20,000 almost. Uh, not bad. More importantly, though, you do see that in the more aggressive part of this downtrend, uh, Bitcoin did test the 21 exponential plenty of times, rejecting from it plenty of times as well uh, before actually being able to overtake it. So I'm looking for a combination of a couple things. I want to see the monthly close above the 21 exponential on extremely heavy volume just like we saw right over here that would be the start of my upwards momentum as of the current moment in time this still feels a very premature to be calling uh to be calling the bear market over anything like that uh as a trader as an analyst i need you know i need to see more or sorry as a trader but not as an analyst as, as an analyst you know you don't have any accountability you don't you don't take the fucking loss if you're wrong on the on your call right um and right now like i said i am you know i'm, I'm still holding long waiting essentially for for tomorrow's expiration on on derivative options just because that's you know that's kind, kind of how i manage my trade so you know it could just be a it could just be a fact that i just go back to neutral i mean what you know it's you know if i don't like what i see I, I will do that but more 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 than likely if we're still hanging around this range it will be short on my part um if not sooner so 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 what else do we want to look at let's go check out gbdc i know that it's not really leading anymore but it is kind of interesting to me that we're not really seeing yet yeah, we're certainly not seeing it lead but more importantly it is hitting a major major exponential moving average uh, we do have to we, we have hit the 200 exponential right over here the first time that we've actually even tested it since G, uh june of last year and uh in a nice rejection off that on heavy volume you do see also kind of mm, do i want to call, call that fill in the gap not really it doesn't really count but <clears throat> but more importantly 
you know, we are seeing sell pressure off this. So I like the good confluence between both uh, bo both spot and GBTC hitting major resistances and backing off and rejecting on heavy volume. Let's go see if uh, if CMEs agree as well. And then I'm going to bring up another subsidiary, which I put a lot of weight on. And uh, and CMEs look quite different. Uh, CMEs actually closed today right at the 200 simple and back, you know, backing off today, but did not. Well, yeah, the, 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 these numbers are getting are getting bigger again. So it actually looks, you know, it actually, it actually doesn't look as, you know, as 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 what the price action would suggest. But uh, but same thing on CMEs, you know, daily stokes looking a little bit tired, but you can see that we are trying to, whoops, I already got that in there. We are trying to make a nice formation right here on the stokes, which I would imagine if we pop back down, I'd want to see this area act as support. The real question is when this when this guy does actually break, because that's when that's when I'd say that the bulls are probably more in trouble um, as you know, we're going to find out really where the real support does does lie. Uh, so for right now, um, CME is uh, looking a little bit different, actually. Now I'm going to bring it over to something that I really haven't looked all that much at just because uh, people got really fucking mad the last time that I looked at this, but it's Riot Blockchain. And the reason why this is relevant and the reason why I pay attention to this, and I actually have been paying attention to it ever since, um, you know, ever since, well, for for a long time uh is basically because this is this trades on traditional markets it's a sh it's a shit coin of a stock but it trades on traditional venues so the way that you know the the way that the way that traditional traders think is that they can use this to kind of mimic bitcoin's moves without getting on exchange like bitmex or binance or whatever the fuck it is that has no kyc and you have to you know answer to arthur right um and you see right over here that's uh that that we've hit a major major exponential movement average uh twice actually this 377 which in the traditional world for me is you know uh that is the god mode uh and backing off it uh, back, backing off it huge rejection on on tremendous volume i would be looking for this to probably pop back down over um <clears throat> we're going to be putting in some divergence as well on the rsi you can see right over here one two three uh what else we got I mean, basically, that's kind of just it. Uh, if we go over to the weekly, uh, weekly's right at all these major resistances as well. The 200 simple, which a lot of the time, just by the nature of it, it's going to be sold off. Uh, of course, that could easily change, but <clears throat> you know, I'm also seeing weekly stokes starting to cross down and around as well. Uh, do we have any weekly divergence? We do not, but fair enough. Overall, uh, I would be looking for this one to probably come back down and test a little bit lower. So I do like the confluences between all of the different subsidiaries of spot charts. Uh, again, going back on over here to BitMexico. And uh, and checking out the price action. Did we already get, did we already get that test of fifty one fifty that I was kind of looking for right over here? Maybe that maybe you could count this one as uh, fifty eighty five and a half. Got front ran. Maybe, maybe. Still, I'm not really in any rush. You know, I'm I'm really not in, in any rush. There's a couple of plays to be had here. You know, short short anywhere in this area. Use fifty two hundred to fifty two fifty to manage risk on. And uh, and down here you got to trade as well. You know, could close here or open here and use uh, forty five fifty to manage risk upon as well to the downside. Uh, very easy to do. And I think I might be getting a trade on Forex's. Uh, just a second over here, if we can. Oh, come on, baby. Show me the power. I just want to see how big and thick you can get, man. Uh, let's see. Let me just uh, let me just adjust this really quick. I do want to make sure that I get this right. And there we go. Okay, beautiful. Alrighty. So <clears throat> yeah, a lot of those things have been with each other, which is exactly what I want to see um, as the market approaches these areas. Let's go over and now check out uh, the, the 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 top shit coins. We got uh, Mrs. Lycon over here having a major rejection as well. She led the pack, hitting uh, uh, hitting you know hitting all the way to up to a hundred dollars. Oh my God, fucking beautifully done. So we spoke about this over the last couple of weeks that hey, as you know, as soon as uh, as soon as Mrs. Lycon you know breaks or sorry uh, had this golden cross right over here. That's my rule. I'm not bearish on anything that has a golden cross and is above the 21 exponential, which it which it hung above for the for uh for for about a week after that before actually having this move breaking the 377 along the way. I'm not bearish on Mrs. Litecoin, but I do believe that we have hit a major major local top, uh, a nice psychological $100 number, and probably you know if you know while I'm, again I don't want to incite any sort of like craziness here. Um, I do want to. Should I redo this chart? Yeah, we can do redo this chart. It's it's a little bit too too convoluted. I want to see this area defended by the bulls. Um, as long as we're above about sixty nine dollars, which is a great number, I'd be overall you know overall optimistic. However, this thing can really you know don't be surprised if it does test a little bit lower. Overall though, like I said, as long as we're above all major moving averages and have the golden cross, I am bullish. Um, or at least I'm certainly not short, and uh, this is not the one, in my opinion, to be playing a short off of. Anyways, as, as we've been saying for the past few months, Mrs. Litecoin has been the best argument for the bear market being over. Uh, you see this whole this whole run being done on increasing volume all the way out. That's exactly picture perfect what I'd want to see coming out of a bear market if you're going to like really explode to the upside. Um, and this one, 
just just a great example of that i mean right now like i said do i just immediately you know hit market buy hit the green button right now fuck no um i think it's gonna you know i think it's gonna put uh, I, th I think it's gonna come into a little bit of consolidation maybe even come come all the way back down to test uh, 73 and a half bucks um but i'd you know I'd look for that to be bought up uh, again the weekly for this guy is looking strong it has been looking strong you know for a while ever since we got over into february um and you know, weekly support is going to be yeah, right around that range, seventy-three and a half to sixty-nine, uh, which I would like. <clears throat> but we do see you know weekly stokes getting tired. I'm sure I'm sure that we see the daily stokes yeah crossing down as well. We see daily, uh, daily daily doesn't have any chance to really uh, have any divergence here. But maybe if we go down to a twelve hour, we'll see a little bit. Uh, nope, but we are seeing 12 hour jewel lineup, uh, perhaps for a sell. It's going to happen in the next uh, two days, I'd imagine. So keep your eyes on that one. As uh, you just saw, a p oh my God. Okay, so hold on. I think we already got that test of 73. Uh, now that I look at this time frame right here, the 12 hour, it looks like we sold off all the way from $100 to $73. Holy shit. Holy sh Wow, man. What the fuck did I miss in the, uh, in, in, while I was sleeping? Oh my God. That is so intense. A hundred dollars to seventy three dollars. Uh, I wow. Hold on, this this is quite uh, quite impressive. Yeah, almost uh, almost a thirty percent move. Wow, fucking wow. Uh, hopefully you're safe during that one. My God, like I said, this is why you know when I was talking about upwards targets, it doesn't really matter what my upwards targets are. I'm just generally bullish on this one. As soon as you know, as soon as you uh, as soon as you put in the golden cross. Uh, what was it like like a week week and a half ago right over here uh, the green 50 exponential and the purple 200 exponential um, again mrs. Litecoin leading the way putting the market in her backpack and uh, being a very powerful strong independent woman who don't need no Bitcoin and uh, well she probably needs some Bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> uh, but overall, you know, daily jewel and 12 hour jewel are going to be lining up for sales. I'd imagine in the next, over the next two, two to three days, it's going to look like. Um, so again, you know, keep in mind this one probably, you know, if Bitcoin's going to grind its toppy area a little bit, I'd imagine that Mrs. Likeland could pop all the way back up to $95 and a half dollars. But, uh, as long as it's kind of hovering as, as long as it's still respecting that as, as you know, as resistance right around this ninety-five and a half dollar region right over here, I would I would be looking at this as a local top. Uh, that's some pretty intense selling right there. Major volume on this. Yes, it was bought back up pretty damn well, which is pretty much what what I want to see. Um, Jesus, that is so that is so brutal. Oh my God, I'm curious what time frame like this happened over. Okay, so it happened over the course of about four hours. Um, oh my, oh my God, man, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is so brutal. That is just so fucking brutal. Um, okay, cool. Anyways, uh, we spoke enough about Mrs. Litecoin. Yeah, I would be saying I would be saying about the same thing on Mr. Bitcoin. And probably pops back up, tries to test this area once again, and then I would be looking for consolidation lower. Uh, Bitcoin, I do think has some more some more downside than than Mrs. Litecoin, comparatively speaking. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall. How's Mr. Buterall doing? And Mr. Buterall, holy fucking moly, taking it! Oh, there we go, baby. That's what I was looking for. The test towards the 200 exponential, right around 181. Not bad. But look at this. Look at where we close out the day. We have. Actually, we technically have closed the daily above this horizontal right here, but a major, major rejection off of a major exponential movement average. This one also having a phenomenally powerful. Oh my, oh my God, man! I know this sixteen and a half percent move. This is <laughs> holy shit! Jesus Christ, man! You know, keep your eyes on that one. Uh, I would be looking for the two hundred symbol to provide support. Uh, if Mr. Buterall is gonna is gonna keep this more, you know, aggressive posturing, I would, you know, I would be looking for this area to not be broken. Sorry, not not the two hundred simple. I would say this area right here, one forty seven. As long as one forty seven is defended by the bulls, I do give the nod to the to the bulls in this consolidation. However, uh, Jesus Christ, man, I got to get rid of all these drawings. There we go. It doesn't save it when I actually uh, do that. Let me make sure, let me let me save it right over here. There we go. We can do this right over there and uh, this right over here. Got this rising trend line and <clears throat> we got a nice rejection and I'm sure that it's coming back in from this area right over here. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. You got to love it when technical analysis works. Um, we do see daily stokes crossing down. It looks like yes, they are. We do see daily RSI probably going to put in some divergence around here, but or sorry, it is putting a divergence between this point and this point. It looks like let's bring this up and confirm. Yes, we do. We do have that, and I would be looking for a test actually on this guy. Yeah, back down to the 21 exponential over time, maybe over the next few days, which is going to be actually right around that 147 to 140, uh, 148 and a half area. We could say 148 to 149. Uh, we'll call. It. So again, that's what I'd be looking at right over here. Um, 
and uh, you know major bearish divergence along with Stokes crossing the downside, hitting a major exponential on a major reversal dildo, a nice long-legged doji dildo on extremely heavy volume. Probably going to call the top of this rally as well, man. Um, <clears throat> weekly is... So the week, the weekly is where things get a little bit interesting because depending upon how this weekly closes, I could get, you know, I could get a little bit more long... T or Sorry, a little bit more... Mm, I, I, I could see this rally getting extended a little bit more. If the, if the weekly closes above 159, um, I would say that, uh, uh, that I would be looking for another test up to 190-ish area, or sorry, 180, and perhaps even in perhaps 200 after that. Um, by the same token, if it ends below that once, let's, let's call it 159-ish area, then no, I would be a little bit more apprehensive about it you know, in confluence with just, uh, which just the way that the rest of the market's operating as uh, Mr. Bureau has been one of the, uh, one of the weaker ones. You can also see on the weekly right here that the volume on this kind of uh, push up has been a little bit lackluster in comparison to the other guys uh, showing up more interest. Um, let's go check out uh, what, what else we want to check out. Um, it's time to check out the top shit coins. We got some Cardanos over here. Cardanos. Uh, yeah, I'd still be, I'd, I'd still be, ooh. Okay, this one's getting interesting. Uh, very obviously, the major resistance is right below 1,900 Satoshis. If 1,900 Satoshis can be broken, it's the same thing as Mrs. Litecoin. Yes, we can talk about upwards targets, but I'm just generally looking for upside at that point. Um, you know, it's no longer the time to just be, you know, selling everything, uh, in my opinion. I mean, that, you know, that time was over right over here. Once once we got the golden cross, uh, and we broke this area above all major movement averages. I mean, that's, you know, that is my disposition. I'm not, I'm always going to be bullish on something that's above all major movement averages and has a golden cross, you know, for, for, for intermediate to kind of uh, initial long-term uh, trajectory uh, but this major major resistance right at 1900 satoshis uh looking looking quite staunch right now we do see daily stokes crossing the downside we do see daily rsi putting in bearish divergence i would say that this rally probably over as well but same thing as bitcoin same thing as ethereum same thing as litecoin probably going to grind out the current top a little bit and then i'd be looking for it to ultimately come down just as we've been saying for the last few days uh let's see where's my where's my bmb coin are we at uh, did we hit 20 dollars? we hit 20 dollars. hey not bad not bad man not bad but putting in some major bearish divergence now on the daily, daily stokes probably gonna be turned. Well, they're not. They're actually about BNB. BNB catch is probably the strongest one of them all. Uh, daily jewel is gonna be lining up for a sell in the next in the next day. I'd say if you see that if if you have access to the jewel and you, you can't short this thing, so that's the problem with it. Um, you know, if 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 you do see this start to turn around, that's that's gonna be a major fucking sell. Um, but of course, you need to see it happen first. Uh, but it, it does it does look to me like it uh, you know at first glance probably wants to happen. Uh, Zcash, what are we doing over here? Hit it, hit the two hundred simple. Uh, I'd probably I'd probably say that this is the top of the rally as well in confluence with the rest of the market. I'm not really seeing the same sort of signatures, however. Uh, so maybe I'll be a little bit more lenient on it. But um, but hey, if it if it loses a sixty nine dollar region right over here, I'd be looking for a move back down to about sixty three and a half. Uh, Bcash uh, three oh five. Holy fucking moly, baby! Uh, reaching for the gap, we have hit the gap, and I'd imagine that. Now we'd initiate we'd initiate a, uh, a sell off probably back down to test about 249 two, well let's just call it 250 uh, Tron Cash um oh man oh man so hit our next resistance right around uh, two uh, two point nine and a half cent um what else do I have to say about this I mean I'd say probably the same thing as the rest of the market to be quite honest uh, eh, this is a pretty good buyback though on Troners uh, I wouldn't I you know I, I'd be I'd be cautiously bullish as long as it's above two and a half cent right here. I'd be cautiously bullish, actually. Uh, that that was a good buyback. Uh, Neo Cash, thirteen bucks, and in the two hundred exponential. And I'd imagine we probably grind this area once again and come back down. We got daily Stokes turning around. We got daily RSI. Actually, no divergence here, but maybe we go down to an eight hour and we'll see a little bit. Nope, we don't see anything here either. Uh, perhaps this one could be stronger. Perhaps this one could be stronger, but of course, uh, with thir about thirteen dollars and ninety cents, the next big area. If that area does get taken out, then I'd be looking for a full-on test towards fifteen and a half dollars. Uh, EOS Cash, holy fucking moly, hitting our top target right around five ninety and down. I'd imagine that we probably give this area another test, but look at this—we are kind of in the context of a rising channel. Uh, technically, technically a bear flag, although I'm not—I I would not call this a bear flag any longer. Uh, we also do have some major bearish divergence, or perhaps perhaps some bearish divergence, not necessarily in there just yet. Uh, but if we get Get another test at 567 then i'd be looking for that to be sold and i'd be looking for another uh, i'd be looking for a move down back down here to test this area you know five four four sixty ish a little bit below 460. um nice 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 okay man i missed my trade on uh, on forex oh bastard let's see how close to the... 
I was, I was off by, I was off by a lot of pips right there. I wasn't even close. Um, <clears throat> okay, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, daily uh, EOS uh, Stokes coming down. You know, like I said, probably grinds this area in confluence for us to market. And then I'd be looking for major support or hope. You know, if if, if you do want to see this thing flip bullish, I'd want to see support uh, show itself right around four uh, four fifty eight and a half. Um, let's go check out Ripple Me Nipples Cash. And what do we got here? We got oh man major rejection at this uh, 37 cent region heavy volume and what do we have any sort we don't well we don't have follow through obviously uh daily stokes are still up daily rsi is actually okay to be fair yeah i would i would want to see another retest of uh, 32 and a half cent i mean we kind of already got that though we spoke about that yesterday looking for that oh man that was oh man that, that was a missed trade right there damn see i don't get it i don't get every trade man i don't get every trade but it's okay. There, there's always a next trade. There's always a next trade. Anyways, um, yeah, you know, I, you know, we already got that test back down at 32 and a half cent that we spoke about yesterday. Do, do I think that we come back down here? It's gonna depend on what the rest of the market does. I, I, you know, but I would look at this differently. I would actually look at the major support as 33 and a half cent now. I don't want to see Ripple Me Nipples let, let go of three and a half cent. Um, could, could put in a base here, flag in, flag out, and then work higher. And I'll be looking for another test, you know, towards those prior highs. Uh, I do f this this one kind of looks a little bit different has a different feel I'm gonna get rid of some of this some of the rest of this chart as it's no longer you know it's not really too viable right now uh, breaking out of this descending triangle to the upside again the, the reason one of the big reasons why I do not care what you call a formation I only care about how, how you react upon support and resistance this one breaking out to the upside um, Let's go down to a lower time frame. Just, I, I really want to confirm this one. Yeah, four hour, four hour does look toppy to me. It, it, it looks like it wants to hit back to about thirty, a little bit above thirty five cents, and then come back down. Uh, test a little bit lower, but like I said, if, if there is going to be an oddball, this one's it. Uh, Monero Cash, sixty, almost sixty seven bucks. Let's see what we got. Uh, yep, hidden, hidden, same thing. Hidden, hidden, major two hundred exponential, two hundred simple, major rejection on there. I'd say that your major resistance is sixty nine and a half dollars. I'd probably be looking to be a seller right there and be looking for overall test back down into the sixty two and a quarter region, uh, maybe even a little bit lower. Uh, Stellar Cash, what do you got on Stellar Cash? Uh, major rejection. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Uh, man, again, it's these charts are getting too fucking. They're getting way too convoluted, but basically we retested this trend line going all the way back from December 2017, governing all these lows before the um, before the ultimate breakdown in uh, in in late 2018, and we've actually retested this area beautifully. But a major rejection, uh, you know, came along with it as we were, you know, as we spoke about before. This one kind of overshooting it, but that's okay. You know, that's I mean, that's well, actually. Still following this upwards trend line now, isn't it? Uh, front run of the 200 exponential, so nice. I like you know everything in this area, but more, but most importantly, close below that 12 and a half cent region right over here. I would be looking for this one to probably come back down, consolidate lower. Uh, let's see what our volume, or sorry, our RSI looks, looks like. Bearish divergence along the way. Daily Stokes are actually still up, but extremely. I mean, the biggest volume of this whole run is on the rejection. I would be looking for this one to come back down, test lower, probably around uh, low 11 cents. Um, so that's what I'll be saying about that. Let's go check out traditional markets really quick. Uh, spies, 286 and a half, uh, reaching all the way up almost to my 288 target. In fact, I would say that that is probably, I'd probably say target hit on that one. Uh, but right over here, oops, right over here, it looks like, yeah, coming in back from this prior block. Let's actually get this right. There we go. Uh, all the way from uh, 288 to about 289 ish area is kind of where I have my major resistances in. You also do see this trend line forming right here. And once again, we found ourselves in a rising wedge. But this one, just like, I mean, you know, if I'm taking a trade right here, yeah, I, you know, I like it. Um, but as soon as this thing takes out 288 to the upside, I do not want to be short uh, as this is going to have a free ride to the prior height about, to, what is it, like 290, 293 and a half. So, yeah, I mean, you know, same thing here as Mrs. Like when you have a golden cross, like what, you know, happened way, way before we're above all major moving averages. I just, again, my, you know, my rule is I'm never short. I'm never bearish on something that looks like that. But this one mm, going to start to put in, well, well, let, let's go back to the daily Stokes. Mm, no, they're looking okay. Daily RSI, a uh, little bit of divergences here, a little bit of divergences to be fair. But yeah, uh, overall, we actually are, we are seeing the jewel gonna probably gonna line up for a sell signal uh, early next week, early next week. Um, but yet again, weekly is gonna weekly is probably gonna close very strong. I mean, this this looks good no matter which way you cut it. Uh, take making new highs along the way. I mean, this is just your your classic V bottom and upwards and out them. Uh, 
fucking powerful. Very, very powerful. Anyway, spoke about all of that. Uh, let's go back and now talk, and let's actually do a little bit of Forexes. I'm gonna go over here to my Forex list. Let's see, what do we wanna see? Uh, let's talk about the pound versus the dollar. I've been doing some higher time frame on this, ju you know, uh, just a little bit of forex with some higher time frame, so I can, uh, I'll probably, I'll probably cut these out and then post these at the end of the week. So, sorry, before the beginning of the new week, so you know, can always come in with, uh, with, with like, uh, with like, it, with like an idea of how, you know, of what the, what the ultimate, you know, the, the higher term time frame trend is like. Anyways, uh, GBP, um, put in a nice formation down around here. Uh, I think a lot of people are very bearish on this. I. I would say that we're in one massive consolidation and actually this low kind of looks like a good low to me so far. Um, I would be looking for this to actually test higher most likely as we did just test a major support. I'd be looking for ultimately a test over the next few weeks into this area around 136, 136, uh, 136 and a half we'll call it. So again, uh, not looking too bad right there. Um, here's what the daily looks like. Daily, yeah, daily looks to me like it probably wants to rally a little bit as well. Daily Stokes having a fresh cross up. Daily RSI, uh, daily RSI looks okay. Got the golden cross right over here and above all major moving averages. Yeah, uh, more immediate, more intermediate time frames. I would be looking for a move probably into this range. Test these prior highs at 133 and a half. Uh, let's do one more. Let's let's look at the uh, let's look at the let's look at the yen, the yen versus the dollar. And what do we have here? A little bit more of a little bit more of a uh, of an uninspiring chart. Let me just pull it out. When in doubt, pull it out. Go over to a weekly, and it's revealed. This is what we're doing. Yeah, this we're doing something like this. One massive, massive triangle going all the way back from uh, 2016. <clears throat> we looks looks to me like it wants to test some supports right now. Weekly stokes are down. Weekly RSI a little bit more in a bearish posture, I suppose. Uh, initial support is going to be right around uh, not point not not eight nine and a half, and below that, if that area fails, be looking towards this, you know, the, the full the full retrace down here towards uh, not point not not eight eight three six. Uh, those are the two trades that I'd be looking for if you know if I want to play bounces in this. Of course, whichever way that this one breaks, that's going to be the real trade. If it breaks up to the upside, probably going to be going to be, look, going to be looking at a move towards, you know, not point not one. Uh, if we move to the downside, probably going to be another retest of these prior lows at around uh, not point not not seven nine. So. Yeah, this this one's still kind of been a major dis decision phase, as you can see. Uh, overall, not as interesting as the other pairs, to be quite honest. Uh, if we go back down to the daily, I think we already looked at this. No, we did not. Uh, daily, to me, I mean, resting right on support. I, I don't like to short into the 200 simple, but if you do see this area break around uh, not point, not, not, eight, nine and a half, uh, Probably very, 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 very likely that it comes all the way back down here uh, towards this area, tor uh, tor 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 uh, towards our bottom support. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for now. Let's get back on over to Mr. Bitcoin, wrap up the most important things we have on Mr. Bitcoin. Then we'll be back on Reddit with some more uh, live stream action. But basically, Bitcoin hitting our major resistances. On all of our higher time frames, we see confluences between multiple different indicators, especially my favorite ones, like the, t the titty sequential. No, of course not, uh, but but uh, but the exponentials and, of course, the Stokes and uh, an RSI all suggesting that this area is, you know, likely to, likely to be the likely to be our local top, perhaps even a major top, as uh, as witnessed by looking at the higher time frames. Of course, with the daily, two day, three day, weekly, and monthly all kind of agreeing each with each other in this 5200 ish range, give or take about 100 bucks. I would say that, uh, you know, I, w I probably will be looking for trades here um, tomorrow after my options expire. But for now, I'm still actually flat because, you know, it's, I don't think that it's just going to, you know, shoot down straight from here. It's probably going to put in some time, maybe even grind 5150 once again, which I think would be kind of a gift. And, uh, and you know, if, if we did get back to 5150, I might consider a trade as that just offers a very easy way to kind of manage risk upon if we break 5150 to the upside, or sorry, if we break 5200 to the upside, take off the trade, take the loss, and, uh, and actually perhaps go long looking for a move perhaps to uh, 55 to 5600 ish area uh, by the same token uh, I think 5150 and then likely come back down test some supports it would be very nice and uh, it'd be it'd be very nice and easy if we come back down and test the 200 simple and 200 exponential that'd just be you know that just make me, that would just make life so much easier and then we can really figure out what the you know really flush out more of the intermediate time frame picture you know basically stating hey do we think that this is, you know, is it, it, it you know, is this going to be the move or not? That's going to be the first initial segue into the higher time frames. But for now, you know, I'd imagine that uh, while volatility is back in the market, this is still this is still kind of the picture. Uh, 5150 uh, resistance. I'd look for that. You know, as long as that one holds, I am looking. You know, I you know, I probably would be looking at this as a local top. Major bearish divergences. Stokes crossing down on higher time frames, hitting major exponentials on all higher time frames. That's technically what I look for. 
um, but like I said, it can take a few more days. Of course, I've got to talk about this as well. Uh, the MVT signal, I, f I completely forgot to talk about this. I apologize, but just very, 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 very briefly. Let's go over here to the to the daily. We'll bring it up for just a second. And the MVT signal also in confluence, uh, nailing a major top as well. But here's the thing is the MVT signal, once it starts to signal red, in this range, which it is extremely red right now, we're in the same range that we were in uh, during most of 2018 and obviously the end of 2017 when 20,000 was being put in, um, has called every you know every top perfectly in the history of Bitcoin going all the way back towards you know you can you can back test this as far as it goes, uh, but look at this every each and every time that signal is red that is a major top. Here's the thing though, it can stay red for you know, in some cases, a few months, uh, most cases, it's about a month or a little bit less than a month before, you know, from the time that you signal red towards the ultimate dooms drop. But, uh, but the fact is that this has been a perfect indicator in the past. So, so once again, saying, saying, be cautious as we approach all of the major pivots on the higher timeframes that relay into the more macro outlook. So like I said, you know, I'll, 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 I'll leave it at this. I'd still be extremely cautious in this range. I'm certainly not convinced that the lows are in, or sorry, it's not that I'm convinced that the lows are in. I would say it's better to uh, it's it's more appropriate to say that uh, I don't believe that it's appropriate to say that the bull market is here just yet. Uh, and more importantly, you know, if, if I'm going to talk about the lows being in, it's it's been the same thing that I've, that I've always been saying. From a technical analysis standpoint, need to see the 200 simple on the weekly get broken. That's around 3,500. So right here, right now, nowhere near that. Uh, of course, my opinion, you know, do I think do I still think that the lows aren't in? That is something. I'm still not convinced. I'm, I'm still not convinced. I want to see. I want to see more proof from the bulls um, from a higher time frame perspective, and then I'm happy to jump in on the train. But for right now, I'd still, you know, be cautious after this, after after a nice rejection like that. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. But an absolute pleasure to speak with you, and I'll be back on a little bit later. Looking forward to seeing you there. If not, I want to be wishing you all once again, and take care.